Hey everybody, Kelly Stavist here alongside James Hinch, now both pit reporters for IndyCar on NBC. How cool, you got your feet wet and I have to tell you, you look like an old pro, James, from the, the drop of the green flag. What was it like last weekend at Road America? Well, it's kind of you to say, Kelly. I think it really just goes to the uh, the entire crew at, at NBC Sports Network that kind of helped me get up to speed as quickly as possible and, and held my hand through it all and made sure I didn't make any mistakes. I just wanted to get through the first weekend without swearing on air, so I consider it a huge success, and it was a lot of fun. I think there's a few of us that uh, echo that sentiment just on a weekly basis, like just don't swear, just don't swear. What did it give you any, you've obviously are very well versed in TV, but did it give you any uh, different perspective? Because you will also still be driving, so you'll, you'll really see both, both sides of it. You know, it's funny, I had the opportunity to do some broadcasting stuff really early in my career before I was in IndyCar, and what I took away from that was really getting to see how races were won. You know, when you're when you're a driver, all you really know and can focus on is what's happening in your car and, and around your race. Uh, but and you can you can go back and watch the races on TV. But what, as it's happening live, you kind of pick up little things. And that was a kind of up more in a in a booth position. Being down on the ground and pilling, you see a whole lot more of what's happening, of how the ebb and the flow in the, of the race is really unfolding. And I think you do learn a lot about what really does win a certain team or driver a race on a given day. So from that from that standpoint, it was, you know, there, there are still things I can log away for my, you know, my other job when I get back behind the wheel. <laughs> well, let's talk about Road America because impressive. Scott Dixon won the first race three in a row now for him. And then it's his teammate Felix Rosenquist picking up his first career IndyCar win. What kind of stood out to you more, three in a row for, for Dixie or Felix kind of finally breaking through? Certainly three in a row. I mean, statistically speaking, you didn't want to bet against Scott Dixon because, I mean, that's not a smart thing to do on any day. But statistically speaking, going into the weekend, three in a row to start a season has not happened that many times. And so you thought the numbers were kind of against him. And you look at how that race unfolded. That was just perfect teamwork across the board. I mean, he didn't have the best qualifying. I want to say he started ninth. I think he only passed two cars on track. It was great strategy. It was great pit work. It was no mistakes from him, no mistakes from the team. The setup was obviously good. They, Mike Hall, you know, is the genius that is Mike Hall reigned again. And, and that, was, that was one of the biggest teamwork victories I've ever seen, um, you know, out of Scott Dixon in that program. Kind of contrasting to what happened with Felix on Sunday. Felix, that was, that was driver driving his tail off. That was a kid that was hungry to win, and he wanted it more than anybody. He had problems in pit stops. He had eight second deficits down to Pato Award that he had to claw back three different times and he finally got the pass done with two to go. So very different victories. Obviously all Chip Ganassi wins, only team that's won a race this season. But man, that was an awesome race weekend in Road America. Yeah, it was. I'm excited to see what this does for Felix moving forward because he's come so close so many times over his short IndyCar career to see him break through. I just, I look forward to seeing what that does for his confidence and really closing one out. So, all right, let's look ahead. It's another double header coming up this weekend, which is awesome, but I don't know, this must be like the longest course on the circuit going to the, the shortest. Now we go to Iowa, nine tenths of a, of a mile and for a double header. And, and as I rewatched last year's race, all I heard was everyone talking about the physicality of that track. What is it like going around that little bull ring? Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's seven-eighths of a mile, so it's, it's even shorter. And it's, uh, what, what's so crazy about that place, and I think it was Justin Wilson was the first one to actually you know, use this analogy, it's like flying a fighter jet in a gymnasium. You know, you, you've got an Indy car that's going over 180 miles an hour, and you're, la and, and you're covering almost a mile in about 17 seconds. That's a lap there. You know, it's a D-shaped oval, so the back straight is only about – three seconds you're cornering for about a combined 10 seconds and the front straight's the other part of that so you literally get no opportunity to rest on that track when you go through the corners at iowa like i said it's full downforce 180 mile an hour cornering speeds higher banked the g forces are three four sometimes four and a half g's sustained at that g level your lungs cannot expand so you almost have to hold your breath in the corners because if you let your breath out, you're not getting it back. You're not getting any air back in your lungs until you hit the straightaways again. So it becomes a massive breathing exercise for these drivers. And 
and that's no joke, the tire degradation there is massive. It's part of what makes this race so exciting, but it also means you are hanging on for dear life for the last 20 laps of a stint. So you take the physicality, the G-forces, the fact that you can never really rest, and the fact that the car has become an absolute handful at the end of every stint, and there's about five of them in this race, this is going to be a super physical test. Back-to-back -back races, the race on Sunday, the high on, or on Saturday, sorry, the second race, a high on Saturday noon right now is 93 degrees, Kelly. Yeah. This is going to be hot. It's a night race, but I looked at about 8 o'clock local. It's usually only about 3 or 4 degrees off the high. So these guys are still going to be driving through some incredibly tough conditions. Well, it, and it's not just that, but back-to-back -back weekends with back-to-back -back double headers and Indy by uh, GP ahead of that. I mean, to do this at essentially the start of a season, it's just really got to wear on these guys when you haven't been able to get into race shape, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we call it race fit. We all spend a ton of time in the gym in the off season, but ultimately nothing really repli replicates what you go through in an Indy car. And by the time we get to Iowa, we're halfway down the season. You know, that's not normally a, a too big of a challenge. And even then, it's a big physical challenge for us. The drivers, obviously, they're recovering from a doubleheader this weekend at Road America, like you say, off the back of the GP. But the other thing I want to draw attention to here is the crews. The, these guys, the crew guys, all the mechanics, crews, guys, girls, engineers, everybody that's been working on these race cars has had an absolutely grueling marathon-type schedule to even get to Iowa. Then they've got to do back-to-back -back night races. So Friday night's going to be a late night. They get a little bit of a sleep in on Saturday morning, which is nice, but that last day of this sort of two week five race stretch is going to be so so exhausting for everybody involved team members officials drivers i i reckon by by saturday night you're going to have some people that are definitely ready for a day off sure sure pit reporters you left out pit reporters now that you know how grueling of our course. stops are <laughs> okay so we, as you mentioned now chip ganassi with this the sweep so far of the season who do you like best when we look to Iowa? If you just look at, at history of wins, Andretti's had a lot of them. Um, Joseph Newgarden is strong. Ed Carpenter has had some really solid solid efforts there. Who do you th has, think has the best shot at, at knocking CGR off their pedestal? Well, you know, this is traditionally not a strong track for Chip Ganassi Racing. So we might actually see another team have a legitimate shot here. Andretti Autosport was the dominant team for about the first eight to 10 years that we ran here. But recently, it's not even been a team. It's been a driver. It's been Joseph Newgard. He's won three times with two different teams. That's why I say that. But he comes in here as the reigning race winner, as the reigning champion. He had a second place in the bag at Indy GP before the yellow flag kind of ruined his strategy. He had the lead by nine seconds at Road America before a plenum fire in the pit stop stalled his car. Joseph Newgarden is actually having a really, really strong year on track, despite what the results have said so far. And I know he's super hungry to get that first one of the season out of the way. I know he's very excited for a double header heading into Iowa. So if I had to put money on a guy to win this one, at least one of these races, it would be Joseph Newgarden. And I've got to imagine there's a strong sense of urgency for guys like Joseph Newgarden because Scott Dixon has just been racking up all these points. We aren't 100% sure what the schedule is going to unfold to remain uh, for the remainder of the season. So are these guys, you know, was what we saw out of willpower at Road America, is that just desperation this early in the year? Well, it's, it's funny. It's, it's, I was talking about that with Scott and Alex Rossi this morning at the gym with, with the uncertainty around the remainder of the 2020 season. You know, we have a schedule on paper and everybody in IndyCar and everybody involved is going to do everything they can to try to make that happen. But if, situations beyond our control which let's be honest is 2020 so that's almost every situation these days uh, change that it really does kind of make it uh, a little bit more time to start getting those results on the board you can't think three four races down the road you really have to think about today and so maybe that is a little bit of what we saw and will tied in with some frustration for what happened on saturday's race but like i said this is not traditionally a great track for scott not that that means anything because sure. Scott Dixon is just great at, you know, doing everything well and surprising everybody even when, uh, when someone counts him out. Uh, but again, I think this is, this is an exciting opportunity for some other guys in the championship to maybe make up some of those points and make it a little bit of a closer battle as we move forward. 
All right. Well, one thing we know for sure, we're going to Iowa. I can't wait. We've got back-to-back -back races. Coverage starts 8.30 p.m. Eastern, both Friday and Saturday nights on NBCS. And I can't wait. To, I haven't been to Iowa since 2014. Can't wait to get back. Hinch, thanks for your time and, and your awesome insight. Really appreciate it. Of course, guys. Make sure you tune in. Short track racing under the lights in IndyCar. There's nothing better. Heck yeah. Hey, motorsports fans, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe before you go for all the latest news and highlights across motorsports.